Good morning, everyone. As I suggested in my cover note, it would be impossible for us to address all of the different areas that the State Department covers when it is dealing with diplomacy in support of our national security and national interests. But we wanted to at least explore some of what goes on so you have an idea as to all of the different things that happen uh, as you move forward into positions where you'll have to interact with people in the interagency, most notably the State Department. So the first thing to remember about the State Department is its organization. As you can see in this slide, the State Department is divided into area areas of responsibility, much the same way that the Department of Defense is. But it's not the same, and that occasionally will cause problems and conflicts as you try and deal with the State Department. And of course, it's worth noting that the State Department doesn't have any representation here in the United States itself. The overall organization for the State Department really starts with the headquarters uh, in Washington, um, stuck down near uh, Georgetown, embassies in all of the capitals around the world, except for those places where we don't have representation. Um, North Korea comes to mind, places like that. Uh, and then it made, in major cities, uh, we have consulates that deal with U.S. interests around the world. And we have State Department representation to international uh, organizations such as the United Nations or the European Union. Um, what is also important to remember is that there are two basic lines of authority within the State Department. There are the geographic bureaus, and you can see those circled in the uh, blue oval here. And there are also functional uh, responsibilities, and those are, exist off to the right. For the State Department to come up with a position, most typically there has to be a coordination between the geographic bureaus and the functional bureaus or organizations. And that sometimes takes a long time. You can imagine that the Undersecretary for Economic Energy and Agricultural Affairs would have some differences between the African Affairs Assistant Secretary. And those have to be ironed out before a policy that deals with agricultural affairs in Africa can finally be articulated. So understand that just as the Department of Defense has different uh, elements within it, the State Department does as well. It's also important to know that the organizations under the State Department that provide services to our national security endeavors are very, very different sized. Um, there are many, many different sizes of embassies. We have missions to all kinds of different uh, international organizations. And so it's not surprising, I suppose, that they're very different. But I think a lot of times people, when they look at the State Department, think of very, very large embassies in places like London or Moscow or something along those lines. And the, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, indeed, embassies come in many, many different sizes, and how you serve and what you get is very, very much related to where you are. Uh, just as an example, you could see that a large embassy, such as those in London or Tokyo, uh, would have a very, very different kind of operation than the embassy in East Timor. Uh, and the actual way in which you serve would likely be different. Just as an obvious example, I suppose, the ambassadors to London, Paris, or large places like that are almost certainly going to be political appointees, whereas the embassies, the ambassadorship in small places like East Timor are likely to be career foreign service officers who have been promoted to that rank. Uh, and so how you deal with a posting to these different kinds of places will be very, very different depending on what size it's there. Uh, it's worth mentioning that we have some embassies, such as the ones in Baghdad and Kabul, which are quite large, even though one would expect, based on the size of the country, 
that there would be at most a, a medium to small size embassy. This is obviously a function of current political events. Uh, the State Department is actually a pretty small organization. Uh, there are 20 or 30,000 uh, employees at the uh, State Department. These are the professional people. Uh, and in fact, double that number almost are foreign service nationals who are hired into embassies and local places. Uh, this is what it was a couple years ago. It hasn't actually changed much, although there's been some political pressure to uh, reduce the overall size of the State Department. That has been resisted, interestingly, by both the professional staff in the Department of Defense and by the Congress. So what do diplomats do? Well, this is a partial list of what's going on. The ones that are important to us, I suppose, are the first and the last two. The first is that the State Department represents <coughs> American causes abroad and communicates as a formal responsibility for communicating with foreign powers. As you travel abroad, perhaps in um, conjunction with being stationed abroad, uh, the State Department will help you if you need help at some level, for instance, getting a passport or something like that if something's been lost. So it's important to know that these places exist and the things that they can do for you. Uh, they also have a number of uh, other duties that are important, and a lot of these are reporting back. So part of the overall intelligence gathering levels of uh, the overall U.S. government are performed by the State Department, who watches what's going on in foreign capitals and other cities <coughs> and reports back to headquarters on what's going on there. And without their ability to do these things, we would be in a hard way. Another thing is that the embassies really take a look over all of the different programs that we have uh, in foreign nations. This includes things such as foreign military assistance, USAID, and other things. The State Department has two different kinds of employees, um, and they are divided in some ways in, similar to what the Department of Defense has. The generalists in this regard are more like line officers, and the specialists, as you can see, are going to be people uh, that are in the staff corps. Uh, to a certain extent, there is a uh, pecking order within the generalists, and it's pretty much in inverse uh, order of the ones that are listed here. Uh, political officers tend to be at the top of the pecking order heap. The State Department also looks to a certain extent at something we now call transformational diplomacy, uh, historically, what we tried to do is to just use, represent the United States to the countries in which we work. Uh, what Condoleezza Rice would call transformational diplomacy really tries to help foreign countries transform their futures so that they have a more prosperous and democratic, in our view, uh, outlook on life. Finally, I want to just sort of give you an idea as to what State Department mission might look like. What's really important here is to recognize that the ambassador is the personal representative of the president to a foreign country and therefore reports directly to the president with obvious heavy coordination to the Secretary of State and to any uh, geographic combatant commander that might be operating. The other thing I'd like you to look at are the list of other agencies that have offices in any given embassy. Obviously, not all of these show up in every embassy, but it's important to recognize that military attaches and uh, uh, representatives of places like the Federal Aviation Administration or the FBI all have representation in these embassies and that the ambassador is responsible for making sure that the missions of those folks is carried out effectively as well.